are I believe we're live. We're just waiting for everything to pull on up. Make sure that the question section comes up. Welcome everybody. Hi everybody. I'm David Rainishek. And I'm Katrina Rainishek. And we're with juicefeasting.com. Today is Wednesday Q&A live number five. I like the rhyme of that. That's great. That sounds good. And uh, we are going to take your questions today. We're here to do that for the next 30 minutes to an hour. We've got topics to discuss. So while we're waiting for new questions to come in, we'll discuss those. Cheers. Cheers. Got some fresh juice made for the morning. Cheers. Cheers to you. What's in the juice? Uh, it's really good. I know it is. I made this juice with some green where I've been trading... Hmm. My hard labor for produce, which is something I love doing. I go and I do a three hour shift and in trade, I get beautiful, fresh, organic, organic produce. So this has your typical green juice base of cucumber and celery. I started with that. I also use some bunching celery, which I've never juiced with before. Bunching just celery, what's that? Growing on the farm. It's similar to what you get in the grocery store, but it just... about a quarter of a pineapple. I've got a pair of mustard greens. That's what I'm tasting. Greens from Oxide Daisies. Oh, okay. Which taste really nutty. They're really good in salad. And this is the first juice I've ever made with them. Do you like it? I do. I like it. It's got yeah. a spicy kick to it. It tastes really green. It's delicious. It and is. if you're new to making juices, Pineapple juice, just a little bit of it, is really good for harmonizing a lot of other flavors. Yes. And the bromelain that's in the pineapple does help to digest or pre-digest the proteins that are in your juices. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I can't say enough about the harmonizing effect of pineapple. Do note though, if you have blood sugar issues, you want to keep it to a minimum or keep it out if you're diabetic. Mm -hmm. I've noticed a stronger glycemic response, even with live fresh pineapple juice, Stronger response with that than any other juiceable that we've made. It's one of the higher mm. glycemic fruits for oh, yeah. sure. But it is delicious. So, in, And the Oxide Daisy Greens also, if you're interested in wild harvesting, go and check those out. As always with wild edibles, make sure you absolutely know what you're picking. Because if you get the wrong thing, the results are not as good. But yeah, Don't eat delicious. something if you don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. That's the song by Sergei Botenko. Go look it up on YouTube. Yeah. So hit us up yeah. with some questions, and until you do, we were just going to talk about some of the FAQs off of the website. We are. We're going to. We are doing it this May for everybody. We will start doing it for members at some point, but we want everybody to have a chance to come on and really get a feel for what this is like before we move our question and answer session into a more private forum just for members. So. If you're wanting personal guidance, if you're wanting to be um, helped in staying on track with your health, getting to know other members, this is a great place to come. So watch for future announcements about Wednesday Q&A Live. And when we go to our members only portion of this, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you're a member at that point. We've got updates that we're working on on juicefeasting.com. We started to build out a new question answer section. So when that comes live, we'll let you know, but it's going to be more browsable than previous question answer sections of prior iterations of juicefeasting.com where it was just one long page of just questions and answers forever. It'll be a little bit more easy to navigate. So we're working on that and making the site more beautiful with more images and a bit more video and less text. So continue to watch for that because we're always updating juice feasting. Monthly topics are coming for members. I mentioned this last week. I've got mm -hmm. a good 15 to 18 like major topics that I really want to do monthly focuses on. So we're going to start to run those really soon. That will be for members. I might run the first one for everybody, but after that, we're going to run it for 
members only. So if you're a Juice Feasting member on a monthly basis, you'll be able to come in for those monthly topic calls and really dive deep on a particular aspect of nutrition. So be watching for those too. Yeah. So while we're waiting for questions to come in, and let's see here, I just want to make sure. The sun just came out. It got nice and bright in here. I just want to make sure everybody's able to come on here and leave a comment. I believe we did have we a are. comment last week, or was it the week before that questions weren't coming through? But okay. Hopefully they are today. Well, let's see here. I will. I wanted to start with. Um, we're going to get to. Minutes and do that one later. You can start with that one there. Okay, the, the one I'm doing right now. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, uh, my diet's the worst ever. I, I've eaten like Morgan Spurlock in Super Size Me like, for years. Can I go right into a juice feast? This is a common question for all of us as we're new to cleansing and healing, doing natural um, healing modalities. You say, well, I have not done well for some time. Can I just jump right into this or is there some kind of preparation I need to make? With juice feasting, because of the amount of juice that you're drinking, getting 12 to 15 pounds of juice produce per day, plus adding in protein through things like spirulina or chlorella, getting in some good fats through things like coconut oil or hemp oil. When you're doing all of that, you've got a cleanse that's at a consistent level um, that isn't going to be too strong. So on the spectrum of cleansing, it's not like you're water fasting where the body is just going after old dead and dying material and breaking that down. And then getting it out. You'll go through major healing crises sometimes when you do a water fast after years of not eating so well or not exercising, not having good life practices. But a juice feast, the amount of juice is feeding you everything you need on a daily basis for the duration of your juice feast. And this dials down just a bit the level of cleansing and healing that you're doing, particularly the cleansing part, just enough that you're comfortable. You're also not in a fasted state, so this is going to make you more comfortable. The juice itself has a lot of sodium and potassium in it. A lot of what people encounter when they do a water fast, in terms of difficulty, what they encounter mm -hmm. is an imbalance between sodium and potassium. You need pretty high amounts of sodium and potassium on a daily basis. And within 24 hours of water fasting, if you're not bringing in sodium and potassium, those levels can go off. And how you experience that as a person is you have a headache, you feel imbalanced, dizzy, sluggish, not creative, agitated, achy, tired, just, ah, my heart's not in this. I really don't want to do this. Just, blah. and it's just a, all those things for sure. Oh, for sure. I mean, everybody has, who's yeah. tried to, you know, who's gotten into cleansing and healing, mm -hmm. but oftentimes that's not detox. It's just an imbalance in your sodium and potassium in your system. And once you resolve that, you feel much better. This is what we teach too. And we teach about intermittent fasting, but juice feasting has that just designed in by default because of the juices that you're making. So that eases things a lot. The other thing that can happen when you're getting into cleansing uh, at first is you do have a lot of uneliminated waste matter in your intestinal tract, in your colon, in your lymphatic system, etc. The I green mean, your very cells are doing Yeah, your cells are letting go of a lot. Day, so you want to keep that stuff moving out. When you're feeding your body four quarts or more of mostly green vegetable juice a day, that's running right through your intestinal tract and colon mm -hmm. and helping to eliminate stuff that your body's already gotten rid of. That's going to diminish cleansing reactions quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So the answer is yes. You can go right into a juice feast off the worst Americana diet ever. Bad lifestyle practices for years. And I've routinely over the years coached clients who are absolutely new to all of this and get right into a juice feast and they say, I thought this was going to be really difficult. And while I've had a few challenges adjusting to making this much juice a day or some of the morning practices, which I've never done before, actually the juice feast itself, once I'm getting enough juice in, I feel incredible or I feel fine. Like I expected to have a really rough time with this, but I feel just fine. You know, I... not really taking care of your life practices for years. But then not yeah. right back into a standard American diet after your juice feast. Great, great point. 
Great point. Juice these things really to set you up for the rest of your life to be in a much healthier relationship with food. And it looks different for everybody. I mean, we continue to adjust and change and shift the way that we eat. But I feel like juice feasting is an amazing sort of jumping off point if you're really ready to shift up how you're eating and you've realized that incredible relationship between diet and mood Mm -hmm. and brain health and happiness level and all of those things, then it's a great like fast track to get you to a point where you feel way better than you did before. And then from that point, finding the diet that works for you. Yeah. Yeah. So a good whole foods or integrative diet. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the way that I speak with my clients about this is getting turned on to juice feasting and whole foods, plant-based nutrition is a little bit like moving from pop music that you might've listened to as like an elementary school child or a middle school child where you really don't know anything about music and you're just listening to whatever the music industry has just popped out there to appeal to your little nine-year-old or 11-year-old brain that thinks that, wow, that person dresses flashy and they're really cool, but it's not good music. Like it just isn't good music. And you go from that, what? which I equate with a standard Western diet. Sorry, <laughs> I'm just going to say it the way it is. There's a lot of crappy pop music out there. There's also some great stuff too that actually does have some depth. But mm-hmm. think of your crappiest pop music out there. Boy bands that have come and gone, just, just junk, right? That's the standard Western diet for, for many of us, particularly the fast food drive up window Americana. Okay, once you find out about John Coltrane or Led Zeppelin, or whatever or rocks your boat, whatever, whatever it is that you're like, wow, there is this is culturally significant, this is well. There's something that's being spoken to here. There's something that's being done that's that's more um, uh, perennial. Perennial, is that the right word? Yeah. That will last that over time, right? That will be almost timeless. Mm-hmm. When you're getting into that kind of music or art, you're like, this is deeply significant. This is speaking to my soul. You don't go back to the other music, no, at least not very often. You might be like, oh, it's on the radio. That's kind of fun for like 60 seconds. But mainly, you're going to stick with the stuff that's got depth because it's got all the enjoyment, but there's so much more to it. Moving from a Western, standard Western, in-the-box, drive-up window kind of diet to a diet of whole foods where there's so much meaning there in terms of the health that's being generated, the farmers that you're supporting, the society that you're creating, the money that you're saving by not um, creating illness in yourself the good things that you're encouraging and other people around you, maybe the better community of people who also want to eat better, the books that you're reading, the conversation that you're getting into around taking care of the human body. The depth of that is so much more enjoyable, so much more of the time. You really don't want to do anything else at that point. Lillian says, ha ha, hilarious analogy. Bad pop music. I was, I was going to say that sounds a little culturally snobby. Hey, sorry. I don't know that I would say that. Food also is so much more intimate because we put it in our bodies and it really does affect how we feel from day to day which music can too music definitely mm-hmm. affects our state of mind yeah. but yeah makes a big difference and you won't want to go back i mean yeah. it, one thing that i always love to remember too is that once you realize how good you can feel not eating the bad food the bad food i mean it, it tastes good in some ways, but it just doesn't taste good anymore. Yeah. Okay, so we do, we, we've got some questions. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. All right. Rome Rose asks, what's a good affordable juicer? Yeah, um, I'm going to start with the Vitamix. And the reason mm-hmm. is because the Vitamix, while it does cost about $500, it will last you for 10 to 20 years without needing any replacement parts. And it does everything. Not only can you blend everything down with a bit of water and squeeze it through a nut milk bag and make juices that way, like you did this juice this morning, morning. but it will make you smoothies. It will make you nut milks. It will make you sorbets. You can take a heated up soup and you can blend it down in there with other ingredients and and make a pureed soup or make a totally raw soup. Any kind of soup. It's surprising how many things you can do with something that just has blades that turn at the bottom at really high speeds. You can make pesto. Pestos and pâtés. Yeah, I've ground coffee in the thing before. I mean, you can do so many things with the Vitamix. So when it comes to how much can I get out of every Every dollar I've spent on this machine for how long? To me, you can't beat a Vitamix. A juicer will do one thing for you, which it may do really, really well. It may press out an incredible juice, 
we've got a really nice angel juice that's all stainless steel, but we don't make juice out of it all that often because it takes a while to press out that juice. Like I like to joke, you have to name every leaf that you put down through the chute before you actually juice it. Presses out an amazing juice, but making four quarts of juice on it would take quite some time. So we usually will go to the Vitamix and we'll make our juice there. So in terms of an affordable juicer, I'm gonna put Vitamix as like absolutely number one, and for me, far and away number one. I used to use a Samson GB9001, a little Samson. It's a little single auger with a little cone at the end, and that single auger would just go in there, and you put all the produce down in there, and it would press it through the cone, and that thing is really inexpensive. So looking at that, um, it's a good ones, option. Go other ahead. ones that people are really enjoying right now are the Omega. I forget mm. if there's a specific There's an Omega model. Vert. But people seem to really like the Omega and also the Nama. Is it Nama Well or just Nama? N-A-M-A, -A, I Look believe -A -A is the name juicer. of the company. Yep. And people are loving those. So if you have it in your budget to get a high speed, a high speed blender and a juicer, then go for it. Having a juicer is a lot of fun and the blender will serve you long after the juice feast. It's one of the reasons yeah. that we love to suggest it is because it really helps to support that healthy continuation beyond the juice feast. Yeah. It helps support you in not returning to the standard American diet because it's just so versatile. You can do so many things. The Vitamix was so useful to us. We took it from here in Canada all the way down to Ecuador when we went down there for a couple of years back in 2011 and 2012. And then we brought it all the way back up here. Like that thing has we traveled like internationally. Sensor. In fact, it's gone, it's gone across the equator. Yeah, is that useful? All right. And Lisa, when making electrolyte water, what role does the baking soda play? Is it essential if I have the sodium and potassium salt in the water already? No, so it's... You need it's not essential. You do get a really nice alkaline effect from the baking soda. And Arm & Hammer Baking Soda, by the way, is one of the oldest health companies in the United States. It goes back to the 1850s or 1860s, I believe. Mm -hmm. And when they put their product out, I mean, they would talk about how you could use it for cleaning. But one of their main selling points on Arm & Hammer Baking Soda was that you could use it to settle your stomach or to take care of other health issues. So it's been a health product for a long time. But you do get that alkaline um, effect from it. I like teaching my clients to use baking soda in their electrolyte water because I want everybody to know about the power of baking soda to create that alkaline effect in the body. If you're trying to work with a precancerous or a cancerous condition, or if you've got a cold or a flu, or you've got a chronic pain issue in the body, there's a number of things that have with them uh, a, an over acid condition associated. And so taking baking soda will help to uh, achieve that balance between acid and alkaline in the body in a really short period of time for nothing like baking soda I'm going to say it costs nothing you know it's a couple of dollars mm -hmm. so yeah so is it essential no you can do it if you have some other if you've got your form of potassium and you've got your Celtic sea salt you can just use those two but I recommend going ahead and putting the baking soda in there because you're going to get a really nice alkaline effect mm -hmm. from it is Celtic sea salt good to use um I don't know if that's a general question or related to the um, electrolyte water, but in either case, yes, it's a great thing to use. So Celtic sea salt, you can also use Himalayan salt. The salt that um, I'm recommending on the site uh, on juicefeasting.com is from uh, an old ancient seabed in Utah. And so it's a pink salt that's out of Utah in the United States, and it's really, really clean stuff. Yeah, we highly recommend either of those yep. over iodized salt. And the question goes around... Every few years in the natural health community on whether or not salt is an essential thing to eat. So just so that you know, my opinion on that um, from study and from experience and coaching clients over so many years is yes, uh, getting in salt is an essential thing for your health. Short periods of time without salt can be helpful for some people. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that that can't be the case, but long term, my opinion based on experience and based on research and based on working with people like Dr. Cousins also advocates in this way is that you should be having salt in your diet and some of us don't have nearly enough salt in our diet if it's celtic sea salt or himalayan salt it will not raise your blood pressure mm -hmm. raising your blood pressure happens when you take morton's iodized salt and the body can't take the sodium and the um and the chloride and break those two apart and so the body says this thing i can't break into pieces and so that's a toxin and it will flush water and raise the blood pressure and try to get that thing out of the system because your body can't use Morton's iodized salt.
Mm-hmm. Yeah, great question. And Katerina, hi Katerina, on right. day 37, amazing. Yes. Congratulations. She says, I've noticed that if I don't get enough juice due to lack of time, I get really hungry. Yep. Absolutely. It's what I call, well, I used to get what I called juice lack anxiety. Where I felt like if there wasn't enough juice, I would start feeling hungry. And so much of hunger is a mental game often. I mean, it can be very physical too, but we do respond with our minds as well when we think we're hungry. And I remember feeling if there wasn't enough juice, then I would start feeling anxious about being hungry before I even felt hungry. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite things about juice feasting or changing anything in your life is the new perspectives you get on your have enough juice then you will get really hungry and it can be a lot harder to say no to food if it's around yeah because you're legitimately hungry i mean throughout the juice feast you're feeding your body mm-hmm. the food that it requires it just happens to be in juiced form and it's plants yeah but if you get start to get low on your juice which can happen so as we get into days 30 40 50 those kinds of periods in a juice feast you can get a little bit cocky. You're like, hey, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I don't need that much juice, right? Because actually you can go for a day at that point oftentimes without juice. You're like, I could fast for a whole day, which if you're going to do that, you should just fast. But just drinking a little bit less and a little bit less juice, you're like, yeah, yesterday I got like two quarts and I don't know, today I barely got in two and a quarter quarts and, you know, and, and then another day and you get like one and a half quarts. You're like, I don't even know what happened. You start to lose your interest in the juice feast. And what happens is your metabolism starts to slow down, Mm -hmm. but then hunger comes up because legitimately your body is asking for food at that point. It's like, I don't want to keep on doing this fasting thing. I want to eat and rebuild. And so you'll legitimately get hungry and your brain will somehow wind you around in some way to be eating a bowl of soup or something else and you'll be off the juice feast. So if you want to stay on the juice feast feeling great, you want to double and triple click on drinking enough juice as you get into days 30 and 40 and 50 and beyond. Really like refocus on that. What you should see in a longer juice feast beyond 30 days is either you're holding steady with the four quarts of juice that you're drinking or a slight crescendo. Like by day 40, you might be drinking four and a half quarts or five quarts. And by day 50, you're still drinking that or a little bit more. It should be just the slightest crescendo. If you see that going the opposite direction and it continues for a week or two, might be time for you to go ahead and close out the juice feast. You want to feed your body everything that it needs for the duration of the juice feast. I'll give you a little bit of an example here that I give my clients. Mm -hmm. Um, The difference between getting in 95% of the money that you need every month to pay all of your bills and take care of your life responsibilities and earning 100 percent for the month which doesn't sound like a lot. Well, maybe next month I can make up for it. But consistently that happening, you're you're all the month means you paid everything off and you got a little bit left over, a little cushion. And the difference in how you feel between, ah, I just can't quite keep up or I'm keeping up and I've got a little bit left over is only the difference between 95 and 105% economically. Why do I say this? When it comes to your juice on a juice feast, You may think, yeah, I mean, you know, three and a half quarts seems to be fine for me, but then you start to feel not so great, and yet you know your body's still got a lot of work left to do. The difference between three and a half and four quarts could be like that 9,505 reality. Mm -hmm. Or the difference between three and three quarters quarts and four and a quarter quarts could be where the difference is. So pay attention to that. And when it comes to drinking more juice on a juice feast, drink early and often, I like to say. So start your first juice at 7 a.m. in the morning or 8 a.m. For me, I think for you, if we're drinking our first juice at 9 a.m., it's too late. You need enough latitude throughout the day to drink all that juice.9 a.m., that's a bit late. And if it's 10 a.m., Okay, I'm going to be drinking juice later than I wanted to, and I might feel hungry throughout the day. So drink early and often. The other thing I'll say on this, and I have a lot to say about this because I coach clients on this all the time. Well, and it's something that happens often. It happens often. Is that people get to 3 o'clock and they just feel terrible. Yeah. 
or yeah. they haven't been drinking enough juice over a period of days and then yeah just you don't feel as vibrant or as energetic because your body is running at a deficit at that point and yes your metabolism slows down and and then just, you kind of slow down as a person and you're like oh, i'm not enjoying this as much as i used to so adding in more juice more juice drinking it a big difference drink a pint at a time mm -hmm. so um one way to drink your juice is a quart every three hours that's how I teach and coach everybody. You mm -hmm. can also do it a pint every 90 minutes. So it's mm -hmm. half the amount of juice in half the amount of time. And that keeps your blood sugar more even. And a pint, like we just had this morning, like I can drink this down in a minute or two. Mm -hmm. Like it's just delicious. And even if it has something like too many mustard greens in there and I'm like, oh, it's kind of bitter. I can definitely drink this down in three to five minutes max. But a quart, right? everybody's had this experience who's been juice feasting or has drank quarts of juice at a time. You drink the first half a quart and you're like, yeah, that went down. And you look at the second half and you go, but this, this may be an ordeal. You never encounter that if you drink your juice a pint every 90 minutes. Every 90 minutes, 90 minutes comes around and you go, oh, great. Down the hatch. That keeps your blood sugar even, keeps you feeling successful. You're like, every time I approach a juice, For. If you're sipping your juice all the way through your day, mm -hmm. it's like munching all day long on food. So brush not your good for teeth. your digestive system. It's not good for your mouth. It's not good for a lot of things. You want to when you have a juice on a juice feast, drink your juice and be done with it. Now Katrina's sitting and here and she's nursing and on this juice, mouth. and you could do that too. Mm -hmm. Yep, or at least rinse your mouth. Drinking this juice. Yeah, so, so Katrina is drinking this juice over a little bit of time, but she's not juice feasting today. But when you're juice feasting, it's really important to have it like a meal and then be done with it. Mm -hmm. Better for your digestive system, better for your teeth and gums. And yes, yeah. to your point, rinsing your mouth out with plain water yeah. or some baking soda water. I'll just take a jar like this, put a teaspoon of baking soda in there, add water in there, put a cap on it. And when I come to the sink while I'm juice feasting and I'm rinsing out my container... I'll open this thing up and just take one mouthful and swish it and spit that out in the sink. And then my mouth's been alkalinized and rinsed right there on the spot. I found I had to brush my teeth fairly often mm -hmm. while juice feasting because you'll notice that your teeth will get what a very furry feeling, which sounds terrible, but it is something that happens while you're juice feasting. So just brush your teeth more often. Our, Keep your mouth feeling fresh. Our colleague Jameth Sheridan said that, you know, it's a misnomer that that eating nutrient dense foods or eating like raw foods is somehow going to foods so do little organisms that live in your body like the ones that make plaque mm -hmm. so they're going to thrive on a more nutrient dense diet as well so yes your mouth can feel kind of furry sometimes when you're uh, especially after feasting. a really sweet juice yep yep all right are we good with that Hey, yeah, we're great. Glenn, Thanks for the great question. Hold on a second. Glenn says he's had his Vitamix since 1998. That is awesome. Oh, it's amazing. still going strong. We got ours in 2008. So you're two years, 10 years. Wow. You've got 10 years on ours. And ours is still going really strong. I wonder if Glenn has the stainless steel container. I've wondered why they haven't gone back to a stainless steel nice. container. Because they say, well, we won't do glass because something could get in there and break the glass and it would shatter. I get that, but stainless steel doesn't do that. And the fact that they don't offer at least some premium option, they're like, if you want to pay for it, we do make a stainless steel container. I've been surprised they haven't done it. Yeah, I'd get it. be so good. And Lillian, it's wonderful to hear from you as well. Thanks for joining. I wish I'd had some advance notice about this question. Um, what was my diet like during pregnancy? Because I could probably go back and look. I know I did, was doing some blogging and journaling back then about what I was eating. I could tell you up, off the top of my head, because your question is also, is there any successful pre-pregnancy supplements or foods that I would recommend? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I know a big one, which you're, if you work with a midwife or a doctor, that you always want to be taking if you're planning on getting pregnant or even if you could get pregnant unintentionally is folic acid you just want to generally be taking that if there's a chance of you getting pregnant it has to do with the development of the baby's spine they really need you to have that in abundance in your body oh what did i do pre-pregnancy well i mean for my first pregnancy i juice feasted for 88 days yeah in advance of that which felt amazing 
That was such a beautiful pregnancy. I was raw vegan for about three months of that pregnancy. And then at that point, my body really started to ask for animal products as well. And so I went with that and had a great healthy pregnancy. Sophia was born really healthy, still is really healthy. Um, EPA and DHA, I'm going to yeah. jump in here, and also vitamin B12. So EPA and DHA from fats, your baby's brain is being made, and its nervous system is being made out of these really special omega-3 fats. Mm -hmm. They're hard to get from the environment. Animals concentrate them because they eat plants and then concentrate them. Our bodies do that as well. Mm -hmm. But when you're pregnant, particularly if you haven't gotten enough EPA and DHA, these special omega-3 fats, if you haven't gotten enough of that in over the years, your body's going to draw down those levels even more, and it can make you feel really rough as, um, as a pregnant mom or a new mom. So um, getting an EPA and DHA, which you can get from plant-sourced um, uh, supplements, mm -hmm. so it comes from algae. They somehow do some magic and press it out of there, and you can get it that way. You can also use fish oil. A good pharmaceutical-grade fish oil will also provide EPA and DHA in spades, so you should check that out as well. Um, that's a really good idea. So we have a Nutrition for Pregnancy Day on the Nutrition Mastery Program, the 92-module Nutrition Mastery Program on JuiceFeasting.com. Um, part of the backbone for that is a chapter out of Conscious Eating by Gabriel Cousins in which he talks about nutrition for pregnancy, but we draw on a lot of other resources as well. Mm -hmm. So definitely check that out. Yeah. I know one of the things that I did that I felt was really beneficial as well was blending a lot of green smoothies in not so much after the babies were born, but certainly while I was pregnant and I never had a problem with iron. And I feel like that, you know, absorption is a big part of that, but greens also had a lot of iron in them. Mm -hmm. And I was getting in a daily green smoothie during both pregnancies. And I think that made a difference. But that's anecdotal. But yeah, iron is amazing. So mm -hmm. greens are great for that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and if you I, can... Go ahead. Yeah, sorry, I feel like I should write a blog post about that because I'll be able to answer it much more thoroughly than just on the fly right now because I haven't thought about it in a while. Our youngest is... All, he'll be nine in September. So I haven't been pregnant for quite a few years and I haven't really thought about those wonderful years for a while. Look at the Nutrition for Pregnancy module mm -hmm. in the Nutrition Mastery Program on JuiceFeasting.com. Yes. There's a lot there. It's a, a good lot idea. there. All right, very good. What's next here? Which is more important to have three quarts at 2,000 calories or four quarts at 1,800 calories? Oh, okay. So, um, so the question is what? Yeah, if you could make a higher calorie juice mm -hmm. and, and only make three quarts of it. Well, to achieve... So here's the thing, a quart of juice at the most is gonna have around 400 calories probably in it. You might be pushing 450 with just the right ingredients, a lot of root vegetables and then some uh, pineapple in there. So you're not gonna, you're probably not gonna get a 600 calorie, or sorry, a 700 calorie quart of juice um, on a juice feast. That would require fat as well. So when it comes to just calories, like should I drink three quarts of something that would have more calories than four quarts of this other thing? I'd say yes. You want to get, calorically speaking, enough in on your juice feast. But you need to watch where those calories are coming from. If it's just from a whole bunch of fruit, mm -hmm. it's going to drive your blood sugar crazy. So I like to emphasize root vegetables, which are still sweet. They're fairly high in calories, but they come with a whole lot of phytonutrients as well. Whereas... Fruit doesn't necessarily do that. And one of the things that we get in trouble with in Western society is high sugar, low nutrient foods. So you want to go ahead and pay attention to that. And that's why I don't recommend just drinking quarts and quarts of like pineapple orange juice and that kind of thing, even though it is delicious. And people in their 20s, if they don't have blood sugar issues, can get away with a little bit of that. But um, I'd recommend that you do mostly green vegetable juice. So stick with that. All right. Um, Katerina, okay, more juice, thank you. Uh, I have to get through it. I'm just making juices for tomorrow. If I have busy days, is it possible to do one kind of juice? Um, just maybe to some, I would like to add orange juice and to others, blueberry juice, but the base is the same. Cucumber, celery, green apple, tons of salad and spinach. That's what I do. Uh, when I'm juice feasting, because I like to be efficient with this, I will make all the same juice for the entire day. Now, I haven't done every juice feast that way. 
But if you really push me to the wall and say, what's your preference? I'm like, I'm just going to make four quarts of the same thing. And it's going to have ingredients that I love and maybe a dynamic range of ingredients, but it's going to be four quarts that taste exactly the same right through the day. Mm -hmm. When Katrina and I juice feasted in 2008, we would make a bunch of green vegetable juice, but also make a bit of fruit juice for the day as well. We were younger. We were living in Arizona, high, dry desert environment, you know, uh, the nice heat there. So we could drink some fruit juice. juices because we had two of us working in the kitchen but when I'm juice feasting on my own everything goes in that Vitamix and gets ground down and just squeezed into the same juice and it's a delicious juice I'm good at making juice but I'm not going to get particular um, that being said you can squeeze some stuff and put it on the side and then add it back in later and kind of change things up on your juices you could do cranberry that way you could do pineapple that way or orange like you were suggesting or blueberry or cherry and get frozen cherries and thaw them and then just squeeze the juice out of those and add that to one particular juice just to change things up. The other change up that you can do is to make an apple cider vinegar cocktail. Talk about this pretty often. Mm -hmm. A couple of tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, lemon juice, ginger, turmeric, stevia to keep it low in the glycemic index. Pour about four or six ounces of water into all of that and maybe add an ice cube if it's hot and drink it Don Draper style like a cocktail. And that goes well any time of day, and that will break up the monotony, as will teas. So if it's a cold time of year and you're juice feasting, hot tea is an essential. And there's so many different kinds of herbal teas that are excellent for your body. You can do those in combination with the juice feast um, with abandon. And during the summer, make the hot tea, but then cool it down and make it into an iced tea. And that can be a great thing to do, too. You can also make blueberry lemonade, which you taught me how to do, which is yeah. just squeeze a whole so bunch good. of lemons into something. Uh, in, into a the pitcher, water. yeah, in the, in the water, just squeeze. Water. I mean, you can't overdo it on the lemons and add frozen blueberries in there and squeeze a whole bunch of stevia in there and stir it around. On a juice feast, you're not going to eat those blueberries, but just pour it off through a strainer and drink that mm -hmm. as water while you're juice feasting. It tastes exactly like lemonade, like you would swear somebody poured sugar in there, but it's just stevia and lemon. And stevia and lemon taste amazing yeah. together. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa, for the vegan omega-3 oil link. Yep. That's awesome. Right on. Glenn Stark says yams. yams. Yeah, yams are really high in calories. If you did solid yam juice, you might be pushing like five or 600 calories a quart. I can't quite remember off the top of my head what it is. But yes, yams are very high in calories. Yeah. Yo, Ryan. Good to see you on. Lillian says, super helpful. Really appreciate advice from your successful pregnancy experiences. Uh, not mine, yours. Although there are ours. You helped. I'll review days 47 to 49 about nutrition for pregnancy. Thank you so much. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, definitely check those Yeah, it'd be fun to write up. I don't out. know that I've ever written like you a have. concise, have I? You've written some stuff, but we need to go back and look. It's probably on the know. old blog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Just, check out Nutrition for Pregnancy mm -hmm. on the 92 module Nutrition Mastery Program at JuiceFeasting.com. I think ultimately in a nutshell whole foods yeah the mm -hmm. most important because yeah. we all come from a different background we all have different health challenges and needs or not challenges but we all have different health realities when we go into pregnancy there was a point when i felt really anxious which pregnant mamas often do about the health of the baby that they're growing and i was feeling really anxious about what i was feeding my baby and my mom pulled me aside and told me a story about a family that her birth family had adopted, who they arrived as immigrants into Canada, and they had traveled over by boat from somewhere in Asia. I forget mm -hmm. exactly where. She said, sweetie, I forget her name also. I wish I could remember it. But she said she came over by boat when she was pregnant and had nothing to eat but rice, and she gave birth to a beautiful, healthy baby. And I think it's such an important thing to remember that while our food choices are really important while we're pregnant, we can also grow really healthy, beautiful babies mm -hmm. on so many different diets yeah. of yeah. whole foods. Yeah. You're wanting your baby to be healthy because of the nutrient dense diet that you're eating. You want it to be healthy because of what's not in your diet. It exactly. might not be so great about it. Yeah. That's important. And you want to make sure that because you're building new life, that you come through that experience and then you're nursing that life, which is drawing on some of your best nutrients in your body, mm -hmm. that you come through that experience not being malnourished.
Yeah. And so a nutrient dense diet really helps you to feel like you're moving as best as you can under the huge requirements that your body's under as best you can that you feel like you're going from strength to strength through your pregnancy mm -hmm. and you come through it and you're not feeling so deficient. Mm -hmm. So yeah. All right. Next question is Trifola and, um, uh, magnesium 07. Okay. To take at night if needed. Um, if, if lack, lack of time for enemas. Yes. Great question. So Trifola. So laxative? Yeah. So Trifola, mm -hmm. for those who don't know what Trifola or Trifala is, it's out of the Ayurvedic tradition in India. Mm -hmm. It's three different fruits that get dried down. Usually they're encapsulated, although you can just get it as powder. We used it at the Tree of Life Rejuvenation Center. Mm -hmm. I've used capsules um, of it in the past, but not in the recent past. What Trifla is great at is not the most immediate bowel movements that you're going to have. Um, what I learned from Dr. Cousins is Trifla is great for restoring bowel tone, meaning good bowel function, proper healthy bowel function over a longer arc of time. You're helping to renew or um, improve the peristaltic wave and bowel function over a period of a few months of taking Trifla. So my understanding is it's not like you take it like Cascara Sagrada, which will do this. It's not like you take Trifla and you're like, oh, my bowel movements got like immediately better. And there might be some people who experience that like just because there's fiber in there. It's a tonic that's going to improve the tone of your system over time. Cascara Sagrada, though, will cause the bowel to go ahead and move. And so you could use that if you don't have bowel issues like colitis or Crohn's or something else like that. So you could. Now the magnesium, any form of magnesium, if you take it at a therapeutic level, some of that will come on through your intestinal tract and bowel, and you will have a movement there. It will also help you to sleep better. It'll be great for constipation, can help you sleep better as well. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have a lack of time for enemas, those two things will help things move on through. You can also soak prunes if you don't have a blood sugar issue that you're working with. Mm -hmm. You can soak prunes and then squeeze off all that water and you can put some of that into your juice or just drink it straight and that will help things move on through really nicely as well. Prune juice. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Great question. Um, the other part of that which you're kind of asking is, can I do a juice feast without enemas? Yes, you can. You want to watch for how you're feeling though. If you start to feel headachey, achy in general, really negative, really down, it may just be that you need to move your bowels and doing an enema can help immensely at that mm -hmm. point. So I do it preventatively for clients and train all of us to do enemas quote unquote preventively at the beginning of a juice feast so that we don't encounter those cleansing reactions and just doing daily enemas for the first couple of weeks um, can make all the difference in the world in terms of how we feel as our body is doing all that important letting go. Yes. Huge difference. Yeah. All right. What's next? Ryan says, I'm about to do a vitamin C flush. Yeah, you can do it for sure. One of the things you get out of a vitamin C flush, depending on how you do it, is taking that much vitamin C can be really great for your nervous system. If you're somebody who's had um, low to moderate or even extreme adrenal fatigue, the adrenals require quite a lot of vitamin C to mm -hmm. produce the cortisol that they naturally produce. And if you've been over producing cortisol because of a stressor, or a number of different micro stressors that have been going on, like let's say the COVID era, plus maybe taking care of kids and you know stressful work situation, or who knows. You have enough of those stressors and your body's producing more cortisol to keep you going day to day to day, moment to moment, and it draws down the amount of vitamin C available in your system. So when you do something like a vitamin C flush, meaning basically take a therapeutic or a, or a really high amount of vitamin C in a short period of time, that will actually help to settle your nervous system. It helps to settle the adrenals. It's so one of the top things I have clients do who have moderate or extreme adrenal fatigue is to get a lot of vitamin C in. So um, I hope that goes well for you. Yeah. Mind, power, and positive vibes, most important. Good breathing and water. Absolutely. And you know, we are shallow breathers, a lot of us. We sit in chairs like we're at a standing desk right now. So Katrina's sitting on a stool, but I'm standing up and I stand for all of my coaching. When we sit in a chair and we get like this, it mm -hmm. starts to limit the amount that we can actually just physically take in in terms of air and we become shallow breathers. This is probably one of the reasons we feel not so happy being on the computer for a long time or being on social media for a long time. It changes the way that we breathe. So Ryan, to your point, getting out for a walk and just breathing all the way in and all the way back out 
and all the way in and all the way back out. And actually oxygenating your system is really important. And juice feasting, because of all of the water, really oxygenates your system. And this is one of the reasons we feel so much better when we juice feast. We've been dehydrated. So we get that water in, and not only is that just helping in general, but water carries oxygen. We're more well oxygenated. The oxygen carrying capacity of our blood is improved when we're better hydrated. There's a really so, yeah. fantastic book that came out recently. I'm not going to remember the name of the author, but the title is Breathe. And it's all about yeah. the importance of breathing and how much it affects all of the other systems in our body and yeah. our health overall. Yeah. And Ryan's saying, you know, triphala is really great. Um for magnesium, zinc, and potassium. I'm sure that's true. Yeah, mm -hmm. and thanks for posting that. Yeah, I'm not against triphala at all, but just note that the benefits that uh, that you get the best from it come over a longer term use, like one to three months or one to six months. I know Dr. Cousins had a few people, he said, you're just going to take this for the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. You know, they had had constipation and other bowel issues for years, and he's like, it's not going to hurt you. Just make it a daily practice and take it, and you'll get the tonifying benefits over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. All right, let's see here. Go back to our FAQs. All right, uh, let's see here. What do I want to answer next? How will I function at work while I'm juice feasting? Oh, Ryan just corrected. The buffered oh, yeah. vitamin C has all of those, not... Oh, the buffered Z. Oh, okay. So I don't know, actually, the nutrients that are in triphala because I've never looked at triphala from a mineral or nutrient standpoint, so I thought you knew something I didn't know. Okay, the buffered C has those. Great. I'm glad that it comes with all that. Yeah, super. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see here. Um, so yeah, how will I function at work while I'm juice feasting? If you are doing your morning practices, doing your enema in the morning, hot and cool shower, tongue scraping, all the things that we've got laid out in the How to Juice Feast course, which is free on juicefeasting.com. If you're doing those practices and you're making your juice and you're getting your first juice in at around 7 or 8 a.m. in the morning and you're drinking it like a meal, on a regular basis throughout the day, a quart every three hours or a half a quart every 90 minutes, and you're doing that, then you're well fed. You're giving your body all the permission that it needs to let go of what it needs to let go of, and it's able to do that in an efficient manner. You should feel fine going to work. That's not to say that you might not have a day here or there where you say, a lot's moving through right now, or I just feel like I need to lay down and actually rest. My body is telling me it needs a healing rest. And you call in, quote unquote, sick to work, and you take that day off and you just rest and relax and either drink your juice or fast. That kind of thing can happen. But by and large, you should feel well enough, if not over the moon, while you're juice feasting. And there's so many days like that. You're like, I am just on it in a way that I haven't been for a long time. Many of my clients tell me at some point in the first 30 days, I'm feeling better now than I have ever in my adult life. I love hearing that. And it's almost like word for word that ends up just coming out of clients' mouths. I'm feeling better now than I have in my adult life. Wow. So how does that apply to work? Amazingly. Um, juice feasting makes it safe for you to go to work, safe for you to drive. You can take care of your bills, your family, all of that kind of thing. And spend that way since the beginning. And it's one of the things that was really compelling to Dr. Cousins when I presented this to him as a practice. He's like, you've got people juicing for 90 days who've never done any juicing before. Like, all juice. I said, yeah, they're going to work. Yeah. Okay, tell me more. You know, it's, it's compelling. You know, it really blew the lid off of cleansing technologies when we, when we put this out many years ago. I was just going to say there's... You've had clients that do any number of jobs, too, from construction to yep. teaching, yep. working in offices, sure. doing physically demanding work. Pretty much anything you can think of. Yep. I don't think I've coached right. an airline pilot before. That'd be great. But yeah. that they'd have a logistical challenge in getting all of their juice. <laughs> or to having to go out. to the back of the plane to go to the bathroom. Yeah, they again. need to figure out how yeah. to get their juice in all of yeah. their different uh, locations. Workaholics tend to really like juice feasting because your food issue is just, it's taken care of at the beginning of the day. The rest of your day, you can focus on work or relaxing, whatever it is that you're doing, but you're not going out for a meal. You're not having to like shop for anything. You can just get, get to work. Um, and you're usually clear um, because you're more well hydrated, you're more well oxygenated, you're really well nourished, and you don't have a diet that might be dogging you day to day to day. That's not happening while you're juice feasting. So yeah. Yeah. Great. If we don't see any more questions pop up, anyone have any more questions? Yeah, so take more questions. We're still looking for more to pop up here. Um, am I going to get enough nutrients on a juice feast? This is an excellent question we answered in the frequently asked questions section. Yes. 
for the duration of your juice feast, um, you will, because of the 8 to 12 pounds of produce, plus spirulina and chlorella, the fats like uh, coconut oil and hemp oil that you're taking in, maybe fish oil if you're not vegan, um, the uh, hemp protein that you can take in for more protein, okay? All of these things are going to nourish you beautifully while you're juice feasting for the duration of a juice feast. Mm -hmm. That being said, the body requires an even more dynamic range longer period of time. So this is sufficient, and in some cases, like just incredible um, nutrition for um, someone coming out of a standard Western diet. It's incredible nutrition. Um, it is enough for you for the duration of your juice feast. Especially if you have weight to lose, because yep. your body will be using the extra body weight that you've had for energy. Yes. Once you're finished juice feasting, though, and you've gotten towards your ballpark weight range, or you've completed your juice feast for mm -hmm. the time being, you need more protein, you know, over the longer haul if you're looking to build muscle. Can you build muscle while you're juice feasting? Yeah, you can. Uh, you'd have to drink six or seven or eight quarts of juice a day and put in more hemp protein. It's not yeah, enough no, protein to really protein. be putting on lean body mass mm -hmm. over a long period of time. So that'd be an example of why it's adequate protein for the time that your body is doing this amazing work. But post juice feast, if you're looking at putting on some muscle mass, which is important for us as we get older, you're going to want a diet that has an even more dynamic range of nutrients and even more calories in it so that you can do that kind of rebuilding work post juice feast. Yeah. So Glenn says, how about exercising when starting a juice feast? Do I need to wait for 30 days before starting back to exercise or can, can I continue exercising when starting a juice feast? He means resistance training, rebounding, bicycling, and elliptical. May I answer that? Please do. Okay, so the image that comes to mind when I get this question is a woman, I think I saw her at the fitness center one day, like at the YMCA, mm -hmm. a YMCA type place, or maybe you told me about her, or we just talked about this kind of person as an archetype. I can't remember. But my image in my mind is a woman, this was a real person, who was doing something like Zumba, which is a music like a, a fitness class with a lot of bouncing around and kicking and doing all this stuff. And this woman was nine months pregnant. I mean, clearly nine months pregnant, huge belly and doing all that kind of thing. Now, why could she do that at nine months pregnant? Because she did it prior to pregnancy, probably. And did it day by day or on a regular basis all the way through her pregnancy. So her body was pre-adapted for it and then adapted again as she went through her pregnancy to be able to bounce up and down like that and do all the things that you do in Zumba class as a nine months pregnant woman, right? Which means that she wasn't going to have, um, you know, she wasn't going to give birth earlier than she should have. Whereas if you took a woman who'd never done that before, nine months pregnant and said, now you're going to do a Zumba class, she'd go into labor. Like it just Maybe. I mean, it'd be a strong likelihood, though. Like doctors say, don't move around quite that much this late in the pregnancy. Don't upset your apple cart. Mm -hmm. Okay, why do I bring this up? If you come into a juice feast and you've been doing a regular type of training, exercise training, whatever your regular exercise activity has been, you should, because you're pre-trained to do it, you should be able to continue doing that right through your juice feast. Your body's already adapted to that. It knows how to do it. And the amount of juice that you're going to drink should be adequate to continuing to do that. You might though find that you need to back it off 25% or 30% while you're juice feasting because of all the other work that your body is doing to clean house and the fact that a juice feast doesn't provide quite as much as your normal day-to-day -day diet does. So you might need to back it off. But you might also find, nope, I just moved right on through it. Don't be under the impression though that you're going to build muscle or endurance to a high degree while you're juice feasting. That kind of thing is done best post juice feast or outside of a juice feasting paradigm. So when you're juice feasting, what you want to get out of exercise is keeping the wheel in motion, as I like to say. Mm -hmm. You don't want things to get stuck in your system. Stuckness is often associated with suffering. So when, uh, when we're sick, we're stuck with something in our systems that we don't want, or we're stuck waiting for a nutrient or something that we do need, some kind of reality. So when we're cleansing and healing and rebuilding, we want to keep things in motion so that stuckness is not in play. Stuckness is the first stage of disease. Just sitting on your butt, not doing anything, things just getting stagnated in your system. Mm -hmm. So movement on a juice feast is designed to keep things in motion, to keep things moving on through and new nutrients, resupplying the body with what it needs so that it can do some rebuilding 
um, and maintenance yeah. of the body. And supporting of the lymph, which is one of your biggest Yes, yes. So after the brain. juice feast is where you want to start focusing mm -hmm. on, again, uh, really getting a lot out of strength training and endurance training, right? So just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you've already been doing those things, just like the woman who was nine months pregnant and doing Zumba, yeah, if you're coming into it already with that experience and that capability, you should be able to continue to exercise that when you start juice feasting. Great question, Glenn. All right, we've got about four minutes left. Okay, I uh, juice feast tea, uh, infrared sauna. Thoughts on that also, thank you. I can't quite read. I think you maybe misspelled something there, but um, infrared saunas on a juice feast. Yeah, I mean, we've got a biomat right behind us, right down here. I just jump off of a coaching call sometimes and I'll lay on that, um, particularly during the winter. Infrared heat is fantastic. A lot of us are running a bit cool. And if you're running, I mean, off a juice feast, just in our daily lives, our body is a little bit cooler than it should be. This does dial down immune function. If you're somebody who feels chronically tired, feels malaise, um, feels like you get colds and flus pretty often, check your body temperature. It may be that it's half a degree low on average. And if that's the case, you want to look at how you can raise that. Now, juice feasting, just like fasting, will tend to diminish body temperature just a little bit. The metabolism temporarily just eases well, back a little bit, a bit, right? Now, the overall benefit should be that your metabolism gets better as a result of tuning everything up in your system. But during the juice feast, it will ease back just a little bit. You'll feel just a little bit cooler. So uh, there are a number of things that you can do to keep your body warmer during a juice feast or a fast. And one of those would be to access infrared heat or to go jump in a hot tub, you know, if you can find something like that, or jump in the shower. When I'm juice feasting, I'll just take three showers a day sometimes. It's only like five minutes, but I'll mm -hmm. jump in there and get the hottest up. water I can stand and warm up and then come mm -hmm. back out and put the same clothes right back on. Yeah. If you did mean that, it looks like that sentence got broken a little bit, but if you're really talking about a teen ager juice feasting that's a whole other question because that's a different age group like we say never children should never juice feast yeah teenagers it really depends it's very person specific it would depend on a lot of factors so we yeah. need to know more about that ryan says i sit way too much for work i think you're not alone there yeah and lymph being stagnant we have a rebounder that we love to just get up every 20 minutes or so and go jump on. It's amazing for lymph. Helps keep it moving really nicely and walking as well. It reminds me of the Mark Rober. We're really, our kids are really into Mark Rober right now, who's a previous NASA employee and he did some engineering workshop with people and someone created something that would kick the bottom of your chair if you'd been sitting too long. I was like, everybody needs that. Yeah. So it's on a timer. So if you'd been sitting still at your desk for too long, yeah. Gives yep. you a good kick in the butt so you get up. I teach yeah. clients to sneak exercise in. So mm -hmm. being a parent, you know, and often and being a professional, you always have a long time to go exercise. Sometimes you mm -hmm. get that, but oftentimes there's just too many things to do during the day. So how do you still stay active? Take one to five minutes to do things. So you could do push-ups for one minute. You can stretch for a minute. You could do air squats for a minute. You know, look up calisthenics and look into how to do that in little short bursts, and you make a practice of doing those things throughout the day. I've got rings that are right over here that you can't see, but they're hanging up here in my office space. And in between things, I'll just go over and hang on the rings and do some pull-ups or adjust them and do push-ups, and then come back over here and keep on doing things. And like Katrina said, I've got the rebounder. I just go right over and I'll jump on it for even 30 seconds or a minute. Changes my state of mind, moves the lymphatic system, gets me breathing differently, puts me in a different state. And then I can come back over here to the computer and continue to do my professional work or what it is that I need to do. Yeah. Oh, I see. Instead of feasting, it was, he meant feasting. Oh, feasting. Yeah, great. great. All right. Cool. Excellent questions. All right, let's see if there's anything else we want to discuss. We are at our time right now, so let's see. All right, next week, we'll talk about what's the spectrum of cleansing. Mm -hmm. and we'll talk about that a little bit and um, and then... And, uh, a few other questions that we've got listed out here, but we are at our hour for the day. Thank you everyone for coming Thank on. You. Thank you for your questions. Yep. You're hosting a juice feast right now. Did you mention that? At the I am hosting a juice feast spring right now. The spring feast. juice spring feast is, is coming up. time ever to do it. So if you're interested in private coaching and being involved with a small group of about eight people who will be juice feasting with me, 
please contact me through the website, juicefeasting.com. Mm -hmm. Get in touch with me or answer the email that we just sent out about that. And I will get in touch with you and we'll get underway. Or you can Look send us a it. message here on Facebook. Yeah, you certainly can. And I'll get in touch with you. Mm -hmm. All right. Have a great day. Thank you for coming on. We'll look Thank forward to you. seeing you again for another Q&A Live. Bye, Next everybody. Wednesday. Bye.